and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with an updated flip through of my collection bullet journal and one of the first things that you'll notice that's different is I have gone back to just having one collection bullet journal. Um, the secondary collection bullet journal, the semi-permanent collection bullet journal that I was using before if you saw my old video, um, I realized that I wasn't, I didn't really need it, I wasn't making use of it and so I went back to just having the one and I find that that's simplified my life a little bit more. Um, so since it has been a while, I'll just give you guys a full flip through of what is currently in here. So this is first, this is again the um, soft cover Loic term. It is a dot grid, it is A5 size, and it's about half the number of pages as the standard hardcover Loic term. So um, one thing you'll notice, there's only one bookmark in here, which for me, for what I use this journal for, that's totally sufficient. Um, it has all of the other features of a Loic term. So it does have the, oops, it does have whoop, numbered pages. Uh, it has the pocket in the back. It has the index in the front. Um, really the main difference is it's soft cover and it's only half the pages. So I believe it's actually 100, 121 pages all told. So let's dive in. So on the inside here, I have not really changed anything. Uh, at one point, I wanted to make a little bit of a key for media because that is something that I use in this notebook a lot. And I don't really refer to it. You know, it doesn't bug me that it's there. I do it on the bottom of the pages um, and I've just left this sticky note here, but I don't, I don't really use that. I have just my general information and I have this quote that I did a long time ago. You can tell I actually, every time I look at this, I'm like, mm, I kind of want to redo it, but you know, it is what it is. I have, I did date when I started this because I thought it would be nice to see, you know, how long this journal actually lasts me and how long it, you know, how, how many memories are in here essentially. So I just have the general month um, starting date. I didn't bother doing the actual day. And then I have it open down here to do the end. And then I have my index, so I am pretty good about keeping up with my index. You'll see here that I have my second page, and I do actually have a couple of um, pages at the back of my book that I have gone ahead and marked, and I have a blank spread, which is why I just kind of skipped a line here so that I would have room in case I did a different spread in there later. And then it gets into the actual journal. So. If this were my bullet journal, this is where I would have my year at a glance. And so I thought this was a good place to do my bucket list. And you can tell that I had a bunch of stuff that I added in a long time ago, and then you have more recent. So you can tell how my how my handwriting has changed. Um, I've only checked off one thing on this, but it's a bucket list. So I have my entire life to do it. So I feel like that's not too terrible. Again, I have my four year overview. So I, since I started this in 2016, I just did 2016, 17, 18, and 19. I have a couple of important dates along the side. So for example, um, my two-year anniversary in France was this um, September of 2016. I turned 30 in 2017, and my lease, it's a three, it was a three-year lease, or it is a three-year lease, so I had the lease up here so that I could just kind of keep track. Um, they're not tasks, they're just information, and so that's why I did them along the edge there. And then everything else was, um, everything else is task-related kind of information, and you'll see that I use the same, um, or the standard bullet journal system where I have, I cross it off if I did it, I migrate it with an arrow if I didn't, and yeah, pretty straightforward. So these are kind of global goals. These aren't very specific. These are just kind of things I think I'd like to do in those years. And then this is the kind of thing where when I'm setting up my new goal challenges for the year or, you know, doing 101 and 1001, I would go here and look and see what kinds of things I wanted to get done and then incorporate them into those goal challenges or, you know, migrate them to another year if it's just not the right time. Next up, let's go ahead move the bookmark. Next up, I have my 52 goals and 52 weeks for 2017. I'm currently two, four, so five, 10, 15, 20, 25. I have 27 goals in. Um, I'm not actually sure if I have updated it recently. I think it's pretty up to date. And yeah, you'll, you'll see. I mean, it's almost November and I'm about halfway through, which 
honestly, for me, is pretty good. I'm actually not too upset that, you know, I don't, I don't have more done. And this is something that if you saw my 101 and 1001 videos, you'll know that I actually have migrated some of these goals to my new goal challenge. I just haven't crossed them off here. So um, I'm not too fussed. This actually, this helped me do a lot more than I think I would have done if I hadn't set some of these goals for myself. There are other things that I know that I keep putting off doing. So, you know, they're the ones that it's just going to take me longer to get through. I need to work on that. That's uh, procrastination. That's one of my... One of my um, foibles, if you will. Anyway, so this is my goal page. And when I, so when I complete them, I do a dot to show that it's been completed and I attempt to um, do the date. Sometimes I don't always remember. So it's either going to be the specific date, it'll be a range of time, or it'll just be like the month. Uh, it depends sort of the type of goal because I have certain goals that just by their very nature take longer and so I'll have a range of time, so a couple of months. Others that are something that I've worked on and just take one month or something that was, you know, I finished this book, it's a specific date. So uh, that is kind of general. And also for my reading goals, I marked the date that I actually accomplished the number of books that I read, the number of books that I wanted to read. But I've also included a space to put my 2017 total because I have read more than the books that I had intended to read. And that takes us to the next spread. So this is my... 52 books in 52 weeks goal spread. You'll notice that it is completely full. I'm actually really proud of myself. Um, this whole spread has 62, 62, 66 books on it. Um, apparently I can't read my numbers. And you'll notice that it's very simple. So I just have the number. So which book number, you know, starts at one, ends at 66. I have the week that I read it. So I can kind of see when I've got um, sort of clumping. So some weeks I'll read four books and then I'll go two weeks and I won't read any books. So I have that on here so I can see how those sort of parsed out among like during the year. Then title, author, and then my ratings, which my ratings are completely arbitrary. I, to be perfectly honest, all of this information is also on Goodreads because I'm doing the Goodreads reading challenge. However, when I finish a book, I pretty much never rate it. Um, I... I don't rate and I don't write reviews. And the reason for that is that I find reading to be very personal. And so while periodically I will look at other people's ratings and reviews for books, I very often do not. Um, I like to kind of go in to a book not knowing what other people think of it. Um, sometimes you can't get away from that. I mean, there, there are certain like Cult, like cult classics or like popular books at the time that you just can't get away from knowing that kind of stuff. But sometimes I like books that other people really don't like and vice versa. And so I've kind of learned over time that I really just don't like to read the reviews and I don't really pay attention to the ratings. If I'm on the fence about a book, like I'm just not sure if I want to read it, then I might look at the reviews. But if it's something that I want to read, I don't even pay attention to it. And so because of how I function as a reader on social media, I just don't rate and review books myself. And I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys, but um, that's basically what it is. So if you look at my ratings, this is how I thought about it, but it's not a consistent rating. Like I might give something a couple of hearts for a very different reason than I gave this book a couple of hearts, for example. Um, you know, it's not, it's not consistent. It's whatever I felt when I finished the book, then that was, that was my rating. So um, anyway. <laughs> I hope that made sense. Um, the other thing I do have on here is down at the bottom, I have this little dot and then it mar I marked that it was a book in French. So you'll see next to the week. So I've got uh, week 10, week 12, week 24. So you'll see these little dots, week 34 here. Those are all books that I read in French um, because I have a secondary goal of reading 15 books this year in French. And I do count manga because, you know, it, you know, it takes... It takes, it's a book. It takes you time to read it. Um, so even though it's much faster than if I were to read an actual novel in French, I'm counting it because um, I feel like you have to reward yourself for effort. So if I'm making an effort to read in, you know, not my native language, then I want to give credit where credit's due. And so even if it is something that doesn't take nearly as much time as some of the other books that I read in English, I totally still count it. Now, that is to say that I don't let myself only read manga for this particular goal. I do have other like shorter novels in there. A lot of times it's Agatha Christie. 
but I do have other like actual novels or, you know, um, I like Agatha Christie's not really a novella. I never know what the actual page like range is for a novella, but you know, between two or 300 pages. So shorter than like an epic kind of book, but definitely longer than a manga. So that I do mark those there. So especially when you see a couple like right in a row, a lot of times that was, <laughs> that was a manga series that I was reading at the time. Um, and I'm actually one book away from meeting my goal for reading in French this year, which I'm really excited about. The other thing you'll notice down here is I do have page threading because I finished this spread, but it's not yet the end of the year. So you'll see later on in here, it's actually on page 63. I went ahead and just set up a brand new spread so I could just keep going. Then we get into all of my media things. Um, this hasn't really changed from the last time I did this video, so I'll kind of go through quickly. I have nonfiction books, books in Italian, books in Spanish. Ooh, and I can actually cross that off. I have to do that later. I did finish this book finally, yes. Anyway, uh, books in French, classics. So young adult fiction, novels, fiction series. Oops, so that's the end of my books. And one of the things you'll notice is this year I've been reading a lot and so I've not only been reading from this list. So I haven't been very good about updating it because I've been finding that putting them on Goodreads is just faster and easier because I use Overdrive. So since I'm using a lot, uh, since I use Overdrive and I get eBooks and audiobooks, I find that it's just easier for me to either leave the books on my wish list in Overdrive or put them on Goodreads rather than updating them all on here because let's be honest, if I updated everything, like all the books that I wanted to read on these spreads, it would be the entire notebook pretty much. So I, I have certain things on here and I do try to go back through and you know read some of these books, but this is no longer my main list of books I want to read, if that makes sense. Next up are movies. You will notice I have not watched very many of them. I have realized over the past couple of years that I'm not really a movie person. I like movies sometimes, don't get me wrong, but I'm much more a TV person. And so you'll notice that movies, mostly blank, I've got like maybe 10 of them crossed off. Yeah, probably about 10. I've probably watched about 10 movies on this list, but if you go through, I have a ton more in TV shows. So I have this little spread is just a list of shows that I've actually watched. So it's a show that has completed its run and I've watched all of the episodes. So that goes there. And this actually, I went through and I added in things that I had finished watching before I started this journal. So this isn't just since I started tracking things on here. Just um, Next up, I have foreign language shows. So I have French, Spanish, and Italian. You can see I'm not doing super well on that. I need to work on that. I've got drama, crime and medical, comedy, sci-fi and fantasy, rewatch. So you'll notice here, for example, I have Gil Gilmore Girls on rewatch and I also have it on comedy. And because I've already watched it and I decided to do a rewatch, it just went over here. So even though it's technically a repeat, I am still tracking it. And you'll notice that I have a very simple system. I have a box to the left. I have the, here, let's go down to Gilmore Girls. So I have a box to the left. If I start watching it, I do one line through. I have the seasons that I'm working on. So if I finish the season, it's an X. If I'm working on the season, it's just one line. And uh, for most of them, I actually will mark if it's done so that I know, for example, like Big Bang Theory, it's not marked at the end because it's still, the show is still running. So I have room to add more seasons at the end, but I don't actually track the number of episodes. I just track the seasons because otherwise it would just, it would be crazy. And then I have overflow. So these are ones that in theory should go in different sections. I just ran out of room on those particular spreads. Next, I have travel logs. So I really enjoy reading books um, by people who travel to other countries and talk about their stays there and all that kind of stuff. So I went ahead and made a separate spread for this to separate them out from nonfiction books. This was my 70 days of hand lettering tracker, which I finished, wow, that was like over a year ago, cool. Anyway, so yeah, this was just a tracker I had in here that once I was done, I didn't have to look at it anymore. I have weekly and monthly reviews. So these are basically some of the questions that I like to ask myself when I I'm doing my reviews so that if I haven't done a review for a while and I'm stuck for ideas, I can come here and see, oh yeah, that's a good question to ask myself. I think that'll be good. And I can just use them for inspiration. 
I have weekly templates. So these are the main weekly templates that I used over long periods of time or that I keep going back to. So that, for example, if I start using a newer, a newer setup, for example, and I want to make a change, but I'm not really sure what I want to do or I don't feel like flipping back through my old bullet journals, I can come here and I have, I have the rough setup and some notes about what I used it for, what I liked about it, you know, when it wasn't a good time to use it, that kind of stuff. I have my master list of meals, which this is inspired by Tiny Ray, and, Tiny Ray of Sunshine. So this is a, a collection that she shared on social media. And I think it's a really awesome idea because I tend to get into a rut when I'm cooking and I like to cook simple but good things. And so what I've started to try to remember to do, I usually do it, is if I have something that I realize I'm making a ton, I write it on here. So then if I go you know, into my next bout of I'm making this thing all the time and I want to change but I have no ideas, I can come here and look at some things that I have made before that I really liked and I can do that again. The only downside for me personally with this particular collection is that this breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack um, setup. So this, this is basically like the Alistair method where you have your columns for where they go and then you just write everything in the order and then you just mark where they, where they fall. So for example, if you were to do this for a future log, you would have like August, September, October, November. And then as you get events for your future log, you just write them down no matter what the order is and then you put a dot next to the month it's for. So this is kind of a take on that. Now, the only problem for me is that I don't really follow the like breakfast, lunch, dinner thing. I have certain things that I'll eat it for breakfast, I'll eat it for lunch, I'll eat it for dinner, I'll make it for dessert, I'll eat it for snack. So I kind of arbitrarily pick something, but I often find that I'm like, ooh, this could actually go in like three categories. Like I would totally eat this for breakfast and lunch and, you know. So that's something that if I were to redo this spread, I think that I would do a similar Alistair method, um, set up here, but I would probably change it so it would be like, uh, is it egg based? Is it vegetables? Does it have like pork, beef? Um, you know, like by the main ingredient. I think that might be an easier way for me to go through and pick things out rather than by meal, just because my brain doesn't really function on a meal base. It functions based on what I have in the kitchen. And so having that main ingredient, I think would be more helpful. Again, this works for what it is, so I haven't changed it yet, but in the future, if I were to do that, I think I would probably do something along those lines. I have more books. <laughs> you can tell I ran out of room um, in my media section as I was adding more collections, so they'll just kind of pop up. This is for fantasy books. Then I have certain recipes that I wanted to have on hand because I had them in like a really weird format where I forgot to look for them or whatever. So some of my favorite recipes, things I used to make all the time and would like to remember to make, go in here. So I have what's called Mexican breakfast and it's basically like a, like a bowl of just yumminess. Anyway, I don't know how to explain it any better than that. Um, but there's like avocado and eggs and there's vegetables and rice and you can do corn tortillas. Like it's just really, really tasty. So that's that one. Then I have cream of cauliflower soup, beet, goat cheese, and honey tart, which is one I haven't made and I should probably make again. I've got shared eggs, tuna pasta, and a tart. Um, yeah, just you'll notice that I do very quick recipes. Some of them I include more information and some of them are just like vague ideas of ingredients and what have you. So it kind of, it kind of depends. Next up, oh, I have one more. So I have a recipe for, um, like hand, hand soft to like, you know, keep your hands um, moisturized, but a homemade one. So I have that in here because I haven't actually made this yet, but I wanted to remember to make it. So I figured it was a good thing to put in my collection bullet journal because this is a long-term um, notebook. Next, we have my 101 and 1001. So I have the start date, the end date, and I just, you know, wanted to have a little header page or intro page, I guess, if you would, before I got into all of my tasks or all of my goals. So I have separated all of my goals into categories and then I've got, so I've got the name of the category, I've got the various goals, and then I've got the status. So you'll see here that I've already marked off two and a half and I've marked off two and a half boxes here. So I have home, money, technology, travel, and these, because they're both partial, I haven't marked either of them off yet. Um, I just wasn't sure how to do it, so I just haven't. Um, classes, research, this one I'm actually doing really well and I'm very proud of myself, whoops. Language, sunshine and stationery. 
So next I have creative and read, so books that I would like to get done. And these are books that I've had on my to be read list for a long time that I want to finally get around to. So finally, I have left a blank page because I wanted to have a place where I could review my progress. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do this, um, you know, in, by year or every six months or what have you, because, you know, this is such a long running challenge that I could split it up in many different ways. I think what I might end up doing is do a review, for example, on January 1st, because I'll have been doing the challenge for a couple of months and I'd like to see how far I got, you know, in this period of time. And then, you know, next I might do uh, every six months until I'm finished or what have you. So I just left a, a space here so that I could do a review. I just haven't figured out how or when or what have you, which is why it's blank. The next thing I have in here is the Rory Gilmore Reading Challenge Goes Bujo, which is actually hosted, hosted, whoa, hosted by Back to Basics Chris and So Ostentatious. So this is one that was started on Instagram. They've got a Facebook group and all of that kind of fun stuff. And I did this on, I actually set up both of these challenges on the same day, so kind of an epic undertaking. And as I was doing it, I realized that I didn't want to handwrite all of those books. There's like, how many books are there? Let's see. There's over 300 books. So I decided to not be a crazy person. I think it would be really cool if I had handwritten all of them, but I just, I couldn't um, do it when I was setting it up. So I ended up printing them out. So I actually copied the list. I reformatted it to make it approximately the right size. And then I cut out all of my pages and glued them in. Then I made sure to leave room on the left here. So in case I needed to do, I wanted to do notes. I've also got a, um, what's this called? A legend, <laughs> a legend on the bottom. So um, if it was in green, it was from Goodreads. So that meant that it was a book that I had already marked as red from Goodreads. And I've actually also noted down here the number because I used my, my Tombos. So I noted the number of Tombow because sometimes when you just look at this tiny dot, you're like, I don't remember which color that was. Whoops. So this was 312 was this green. Those were books from Goodreads. I have 991, which was the yellow was red, but not in Goodreads. So like books that I remember reading in high school, but that I never ended up putting into Goodreads for one reason or another. So you'll see here that I've got various things. And when I went through, for example, anything that was Goodreads, I wrote in the year that it was added. Anything that was a yellow, I wrote when I thought I read it. So for example, if I thought I read it in high school, I think I've got, yeah, middle school, various things like that. I have purple, so 623 was if I saw the movie, or the play, meaning that I would still like to read it, but I'm technically counting it because the rules of this um, particular challenge where you could read it, watch it, see it, listen to it, however, um, and it was kind of up to you to decide whether it counted or not. So I did wanna go through and see which ones I'd actually seen or read or done something with, and then later I would decide if I you know, felt like rereading them or not. So you'll see here I have a couple of purple ones that you know I know, for example, A Christmas Carol, I'm pretty sure I watched the movie. You know, it's one of those things that I know the story. I I might have read it. I might have watched it. I wasn't really sure. So I just did the, the dot, but I didn't actually write anything there. If like a comedy of errors, I know that I saw the play. So I just tried to make little notes to help me remember later on. I've got a couple of notes here in pencil if I want to reread certain things. There you go. I made a note here because apparently I didn't have... Um, number 210 because this was actually just continuing on the authors for this for number 209 so that's why I made a note there I was like am I missing one I don't I couldn't figure it out um yeah I still actually don't know if I'm missing that one I have no idea what happened there anyway moving on so my notes here keeps going and once again I have a stats page so I just did by the color which how many I've got done of each and then I added up my totals, and this was the date. So I did this on the 21st of August, 2017, and at that moment in time, I had read, seen, watched 56 out of all 339 books. So not horrible, but not great either. Then I've got the update, or the next spread, or the new spread for my 52 books in 52 weeks because I still have a little bit of time left in 2017 and you'll notice that I've already got two books on this one so that was a good thing to do and I have my page threading down here at the bottom and then that's all I have in this front section so the next area that I have stuff already set up is in the back so starting on page 
114, I have my Tombow color chart. And I love this chart, but every time I look at this hand lettering, I just, oh, oh well, can't fix it now. But so I have this chart set up where uh, I do have the case for all of the pens. And so I went through and I set them up in the rainbow order that I wanted. I did not do them in the rainbow order that Tombow does on their color wheel because I found that certain things were just really weird. And for example, I have all of my grays up at the front and I have all my pastels in the back because the pastels were throwing off the thing. And it actually, so it goes, starts from N0, N00, goes from darkest to lightest gray, and then goes into browns, greens, so it snakes back through. So if something seemed to be kind of weird, you have to look at it as a snake rather than as, um, rather than as, you know, this way or this way, whatever, it's, it's a snake pattern. Anyway, so I have my chart and then I also went through and I did some of my favorite colors. So some of the ones that I use all the time. And so I have just the number and the a swatch of the color itself. And yeah, so I have plenty of room to add in more. And if I need to, I can even move over here on the bottom of this, but I did try to keep it as the colors that I just, I really used a lot because otherwise all of them are my favorite, favorite colors. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, and I actually probably need to update this because I have my new, um, my new color code for that I started in my fifth bullet journal and I have a couple of colors that have become new favorites. So I need to add those there at some point. And again, they're really in no particular order. Obviously I did all of my like black and gray scale over here because those are always a favorite, but these are in no particular order. I just kind of did them as I, as I thought of them. Next. I have this blank page, which is why I had that skipped line in my index. I still don't know what I'm gonna put there. We'll see. Then I have in the archives. So this is where I make a list of all of the different threads that I think I might want to refer to later. And I have them marked as um, the number of bullet journal, a dot, and then the page number in that bullet journal. So these are all from my first bullet journal. Then I have my second bullet journal, and then going into my third. And on the next page, I have going into my fourth. So third and fourth bullet journal. And this is just so that I was having a hard time figuring out how to archive spreads that I might want to refer to again. And this just made the most sense to me. I initially started out where I was trying to do things in Evernote or I don't know, highlighting in the index, like all sorts of different things. And it was just getting kind of clunky. And so, you know, the more bullet journals I get, the more pages I have to flip through, the more indexes I have to flip through. Whereas if I have just one spread that's, you know, in the archives, then I can just flip through here, find it and go directly to that bullet journal without having to flip through all of them. So that was kind of how this spread came into being. And I've left myself some pages. So I have two extra pages here, which again, I will totally run out of space for this, but I hope that by the time I do, I'll be ready for a new collection bullet journal and I'll just, you know, migrate it. So on the last page, I have my measuring guide. And this is something that I used to do in all of my journals. And I have since kind of stopped just because I know the measurements a little bit better now, or, you know, sometimes I come back and I refer to them in other journals, but I just don't feel like drawing this out on all of my journals. So I do have it in here though. And that's not actually a Docker page. So that is the end. And finally, in the back here, I just keep all of my archiving sticker sheets from all of my bullet journals. So whenever I get a new bullet journal, I open it up, I take the stickers out and I put them back here so that when I go back and archive stuff, I have all of my stickers in the same place. And I've actually found because obviously, you know, you get a journal and you have three sets of archiving stickers. You know, I'm never going to use all of them for my bullet journals. So I've actually taken to using them for, you know, if I have morning pages, I have, a, I have a set of these stickers on my morning pages journal. I have a set when I finished one of my lettering journals, I archived it that way. So I've taken to using them to archive other journals. So I find it's just really helpful to have them in a consistent place. And I know that I always have them just in this back here. And I don't think I actually have, nope, I have nothing else in this back pocket, just the stickers. So yeah, I hope that this was helpful. I know it's been a while since I had done, um, since I had showed you guys inside my collection bullet journal. So I have a couple of new things, um, new spreads that I've got in here, new collections, if you will. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, I hope I was able to explain them clearly. If I have any videos specifically talking about any of the individual collections, I will try and either link them down below or do a card up at the top as you're watching the video. So hopefully you will have already 
seen those cards as you're going through so that you can get more information um, about some of the spreads because obviously I went a little bit faster than I would if I were giving you an in-depth look. And yeah, if you guys like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And if you'd like to see more videos, please think about subscribing to my channel. I will see you guys next time. Bye.